You're watching the Croydon Islamic Community Trust channel. When you want to introduce Islam to your parents who are non-Muslim or to your neighbor who's not a Muslim, are you going to show them a video and say, look, this is Islam, this is real Islam, this is true Islam? Because without a doubt that has nothing to do with Islam. It's innovation and it's violent extremism. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kunu qawwamina lillahi shuhada'a bil qist wa la yajdimannakum shana'anu qawmin an ala an la ta'adilu i'adilu huwa aqrabu lil taqwa wa taqu allaha inna allaha khabiru bima ta'amaloon O you who believe, stand firm for Allah, witness his injustice and do not let the hatred of our people cause you to not be just. Be just because that is nearer to taqwa and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what you do. When the Messenger of Allah وسلم, migrated to Medina, he ordered Ali ibn Abi Talib anhu, to return belongings that believe that the belongings of the Quraysh that was in his possession to them. So he made he asked Ali to stay behind and return those belongings. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he remained in Mecca for 13 years with the Muslims. And he did not once permit the Muslims to steal from the non-Muslims, from the Quraysh and the disbelievers. He did not once permit the Muslims to shed the blood of the non-Muslims from the Quraysh and the disbelievers. Then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he migrated to Medina. And some of the Muslims, they couldn't migrate and they stayed behind in Mecca. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not permit them or order them to steal and rob. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not permit them and order them to attack and to murder, to loot and to plunder. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he kept his agreements with the disbelievers. Mughir ibn Shu'bah migrated to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, in Medina to accept Islam. And when he came, he had with him the wealth of a non-Muslim that he had taken and stolen. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, did he accept the wealth and accept his Islam? He accepted his Islam and he rejected the wealth. And this proves that the wealth of a non-Muslim, the wealth of a non-Muslim about who you have a contract with is impermissible. So what about his life? And other than that. So you find that it's not allowed in Islam. It is clear that it's not allowed in Islam for a Muslim who lives in the UK or a non-Muslim country or who converts in the UK to terrorize and to instill fear and to cause corruption and to jeopardize the safety of others, Muslims and non-Muslims by attacking and murdering and stealing and robbing. Because without a doubt when you look at the consequences of the actions that happened as a result of violent extremism, it only has negative effects on the Muslim community. It only destroys the image of Islam. So it's not allowed for Muslims who to permit and to sanction and even to, for example, promote stealing and killing and zina and fraud and deception, because all of that's forbidden in Islam. And there is consensus on this from the former Dahib. It's not an issue about which there's disagreement on with regards to the permissibility of going against a contract that a person signed by stealing and robbing and the likes. This is only done by people who are ignorant of the teachers of Islam. This is only done by people that are misguided by extremism and ghulu in the religion. And this is only done by people that have deviated from following the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. So it's not permissible for anybody to be pleased with the violent attacks that took place because it is something which is not something which Islam condones or that Islam permits. So a Muslim is pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with and a Muslim is displeased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with. And that is part of a person's Iman. Without a doubt the negative results to the Muslims living here has already been seen. And it may not affect you, but it will affect your wives and it will affect the elders that go out. Because now as a result of that, the local Muslim community, they live in some sort of fear of a backlash and reprisals as a result of the attack that happened. From who? From the other extremists, the EDL and their like. Those people that have hatred for Islam and are going to use this opportunity to increase the hatred of other people that might not have a hatred of Islam. To increase their numbers and to increase their terrorizing of Muslims, which is what they want to do anyway. So this is a result of the negative consequences of this action. So we have a collective responsibility, every single one of us, according to our ability to clarify the truth. 
and to engage and to also to remind the media and others of their responsibility not to spread Islamophobic messages and views and not to contribute to the negative images that are being portrayed of Islam and Muslims by some ignorant Muslims. You have either those Muslims that are liberal and those Muslims that want to try to use this themselves like the idiot to blame Islam and say something's wrong with Islam. Unless people, these people have a disease in their hearts. And then on the other hand, you have the Muslims that are extreme. And they want to use this as an opportunity to cause facade and corruption in the land. And they are also misguided. Islam is a religion which is moderate. Islam is a religion which is balanced. Islam is not a religion that calls to violent extremism. And like I said, if, if, you're, if this is your da'wah, then take it to your non-Muslim parents and show them this and say, this is Islam. Accept Islam on this. And no one will do that. Because it's wrong. It's clearly wrong. Islam doesn't promote that. So we have a duty as Muslims to engage with those that want to use this to damage Islam and to warn them against. To warn them against violent extremism in every single means and manner. And also the, the media and the government has a responsibility not to use this to demonize Islam and to demonize Muslims. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِهِ وَهُوَ أَلَدُّ الْخِصَامِ وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى سَعَى فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُفْسِدَ فِيهَا وَيُحْلِكَ الْهَرْثَ وَالنَّسَلِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَسَادِ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ اتَّقِ اللَّهَ أَخَذَتْهُ الْعِزَّةُ بِالْإِثْمِ فَحَسْبُهُ جَهَنَّمَ وَلَبِئْسَ الْمِهَادِ And of the people is he whose speech pleases you in the worldly life. And he calls Allah to, as, as a witness to what is in his heart, Yet he is from the fiercest of opponents. When he goes away, he strives throughout the land to cause corruption therein. And he destroys crops and animals. And Allah does not like those that cause corruption. And when it is said to him, fear Allah. He has pride in the sin, pride in his sin takes hold of him. So sufficient for him is hellfire. And how wretched is that as a resting place. هذا وقد أمركم الله بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه حيث قال جل القائل إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على النبي محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين وأقيم الصلاة